There is new bipartisan bill swirling now aimed at a regulatory framework for stablecoins that would protect consumers. And we have the perfect guest to talk about this, Republican Senator from Wyoming, Cynthia Lummis, alongside Yahoo Finance's Jennifer Schaunberger. Jennifer, I'll toss things on over to you. Thanks so much, Brad. That's right, Senators. Cynthia Lummis and Kirsten Gillibrand rolling out brand new legislation to regulate stable coins. Senator Lummis joins me now. Senator, always great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. It's great to see you, Jen. And by the way, that was a fabulous little primer on uh, stable coins. Well done. Well, thank you. And building on that, you know, how does this new bill protect consumers, especially when it comes to runs on stable coins, akin to the one we saw when Circle, the largest U.S. stable coin issuer, ended up breaking the buck when we learned that billions of its reserves were tied up in the failure of Silicon Valley Bank? Well, our bill uh, requires 100% uh, uh, hard currency backed uh, stable coins. Uh, we don't allow algorithmic stable coins, uh, and we require that stable coins in the United States, pursuant to our bill, uh, be 100% asset backed. Now, that could be hard currency like U.S. dollars. It could also be U.S. treasuries uh, or other um, assets that are uh, commonly recognized in the fiat world uh, and very much pegged to the U.S. dollar. What happens, Senator, if a stablecoin issuer fails? Will holders of that stablecoin be made whole, just like depositors in a bank when a bank fails? Well, the short answer is yes. And the way that the legislation tries to provide for that is multiple. Uh, one is if the issuer is a bank, again, they have to be 100% hard asset backed. It's not like a fractional reserve like normal banking assets. Um, then if it's issued by a non-bank, a trust company, uh, the trust company would have to have a separate custodian uh, to make sure that um, the uh, stable coin backing is not on the balance sheet of other app for use uh, for other purposes. Um, so it's, it's definitely sequestered in a way that would protect um, the users. Um, and then in the event of a, um, a failure uh, of a, a company, uh, we are incorporating the FDIC uh, receivership and conservatorship language and incorporating it uh, into uh, the stablecoin world. So if there's an insolvency, there's a process to protect uh, the holders of the assets. So given that banks and non-banks can issue stable coins under this legislation, curious how this legislation would deal with PayPal uh, and its issuance of a stable coin and whether a retailer like Walmart or Meta who may want to rebroach issuing a stable coin, how that would work under your legislation if that's possible. Well, the issuers could be uh, a bank or a non-bank trust company. Uh, so I'm assuming that uh, if it is one of the entities that you just mentioned, that they would go the non-bank uh, trust company route, that they would have to use a um, custodian that is sort of subcontracted for this purpose. Or in if they're doing other business, which all of the entities that you named are, they would have to have uh, their stablecoin business walled off from their non-stablecoin activities. Um, so we think we're providing enough flexibility uh, to innovate uh, in this space in the United States and also providing consumer protections. Uh, our, our goal is to find that sweet spot, to make sure that we are innovating and not only innovating, but leading in the United States in this space. We don't wanna see our failure to legislate and uh, have a clear rules of the road uh, for Americans. Uh, we want to make sure that this industry is robust, strong, innovative, and very present within uh, the United States. We don't want companies to have to go to Europe or elsewhere uh, to find a clear re regulatory framework that they can use. 
Um, there are safeguards such as um, if um, a U.S. issuer uh, issues uh, and knowingly uh, fails to comply, there are fines. Uh, and there are uh, abilities to uh, issue from the existing dual banking system, the states and the federal government will both have opportunities here. Um, there are different regulatory mechanisms if you're under a $10 billion business versus over a $10 billion business. Uh, states would be uh, more uh, able to regulate an, in an under $10 billion stablecoin business. So we've tried to provide enough flexibility uh, with regard to the choices of entities, whether bank or non-bank, whether state or federal, uh, to uh, people issuing stable coins, but still allowing them to innovate. So if you had a PayPal, which is clearly larger than 10 billion, uh, there's a regulatory framework for them to use uh, that would be different from, say, a startup. What's your plan to get this bill into law, Senator? Or will it go as an individual uh, bill through committee, or do you think it could be attached to some sort of larger must-pass legislation? And what are the odds, do you think, that this thing, this bill, could actually pass? Is there enough support in the Senate? Are you working with members of the House that have their own version of a stablecoin bill? Uh, Senator Gillibrand and I are working uh, with members of the House, particularly uh, Patrick McHenry and Maxine Waters, the chairman and uh, ranking uh, minority member, respectively, uh, of the House Financial Services Committee. Uh, we have entertained a variety of vehicles that this might be attached to. So we're working with uh, Senate leaders to see if there is a preferred vehicle that the stablecoin bill could ride along with. Um, we do believe that the stablecoin component of the regulatory framework that Senator Gillibrand and I have laid out for all digital assets, including uh, digital assets that are commodities like Bitcoin, uh, digital assets that are securities and would be regulated by the SEC, uh, non-fungible tokens, uh, CDBCs. Uh, we've created this regulatory framework uh, for each of those contemplated digital assets. The one that seemed to rise to the top in 2024 as having the most legs uh, to get across the finish line this year is the stable coins component. So we pulled it out of the larger Lummis Gillibrand bill um, we put in the language of the FDIC uh, insolvency provisions to add that added layer of protection to make sure that if there is a conservatorship or a receivership that we're using procedures that already exist and with which banks are familiar uh, to have that kind of an insolvency uh, protection. Uh, and we are ready and able to work with McHenry and Waters and anyone else who's interested. Now that our bill's been filed, uh, it's also out there for uh, the stablecoin industry to look at and comment on and get back to us uh, so we can make sure that it's had adequate vetting uh, before it moves forward. We're looking forward to marrying our bill with a, a House version and then see whether the House uh, has the political heft to move it forward or whether the Senate moving it first is the preferred option. Uh, so as you can see, procedurally, uh, we're looking at all available avenues to try to get a stablecoin bill across the finish line in 2024. All right. Well, Senator, please keep us posted on this progress. We'll have to leave the conversation there. But thank you so much, as always, for your insight. My pleasure, Jen. Thanks for uh, thanks for reporting on this. We think we're making headway.